Good morning, everyone. Welcome. What a special day. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Reynold Jaglel. <clears throat> I'm the director for the clinical education for the PA program. And it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to the Master's of Physician Assistant Studies inaugural class, class of 2018 graduation ceremony. Before we, we begin, may I kindly remind everyone to please silence your cell phones and um, please be seated. Um, President, President Tillo, the candidates for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies degree has been assembled. The senior administration, faculty, and staff of the university are all here to honor them. And I would like to introduce our president of Sacred Heart University, Dr. John J. Patillo. Welcome everyone to this very great day for all of us. It is with a sense of great pride and honor that we are gathered here today. But five years ago, this program was merely a dream. Today, you, our inaugural class, have made that dream a very rich reality. It was a heartfelt thanks and admiration that I must acknowledge Dr. Th Theresa Thefford who had led this journey from concept to reality. To the faculty, she has engaged in the remarkable work in developing the curriculum, teaching, and mentoring. I say the university is grateful and in admiration. Now to you, our graduates. The inaugural class of 26 graduates. Hopefully many will follow in your footsteps benefiting from your experiences both academically and clinically, which will enable the faculty to further enhance an already rigorous program. As we gather here with family and friends to celebrate your accomplishment, I say thank you. Thank you for trusting this university and the faculty and providing and preparing you with knowledge and skills of the profession that fulfills your dreams. You truly were pioneers, and we were so proud that we all can stand here with you this day. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, President Patillo. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our program and chair of the department, Dr. Teresa Thetford, to deliver the opening remarks. Dr. Thetford. Thank you and welcome everyone. We're really thrilled to have you here today. Good morning to President Patillo, Senior Administration, Dr. Pollywall, Dean Walker, faculty, staff, families, friends, and of course the graduates. We're very excited to have you here today to celebrate this really special day, our inaugural graduation ceremony for the Sacred Heart University PA class, inaugural class. I just can't stop saying that. I get excited and a big silly smile every time I say it. I couldn't let this day go by without personally welcoming you and to tell you a bit about these graduates. There are 26 graduates, as you've heard, and they all have many accomplishments. First and foremost, they were selected out of almost 750 applicants, and we interviewed 150 people. So they made that cut, which is remarkable in itself. And perhaps their biggest accomplishment? They made it through PA school. <laughs> That's really huge. It's an arduous journey. Some have even called it grueling. Uh, it's 123 credits in 27 months. That includes 12 continuous uh, months in the classroom. 10 five-week rotations in the clinical setting in every key area of medicine. And then they also complete a master's capstone project that includes their research thesis and a scholarly poster. Many of you in the audience know just how challenging slash grueling that this has been, as you've witnessed it firsthand. Had it not been for your patience, your sacrifices, your unconditional love, and the support that you have given your loved one, 
they may not have been successful. So we'd like to take this opportunity now to acknowledge you, the families and friends, for all you've done to support your graduate success. So will the family members of the graduates please rise, and the graduates and faculty, please give them a round of applause for thanking them. Thank you. Now, graduates, let's take a moment to acknowledge the other people who got you here today. Will the, uh, with the full-time PA faculty and staff, will you please rise? <laughs> These faculty and staff have worked endlessly to help you be successful in the program. Thank you so much for all your tireless work. Uh, and many long hours. I was going to say blood, sweat, and tears, but um, yeah, at times. I'd also like to take this opportunity to ask our adjunct faculty and our clinical preceptors to please stand and be recognized for your dedication to the program and to the success of the students. Your contributions are vital to the program and to the education of our students, and we really could not have done it without you. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to recognize the graduates who have earned awards in their achievements during their time in the PA program. Now, the students have already received these awards, but we'd like to recognize them with you. So graduates, when I call your name, I'll just have you stand. You already have the awards, but I'll have you stand to be recognized. The first awards are for the Sacred Heart University Academic Honors, which is a GPA of equal to or greater than 3.80. And you'll notice them when they're walking out, they're wearing the green and gold cords around their neck. These students are Shannon Carroll, Jonathan Dale, Chase Hickson, and Dana Faye Harold. Thank you very much. We have two outstanding master's thesis awards. These awards go to Jessica Labreco Fernandez and Catherine LaFleur. We have four students, uh, I keep saying students, and they're actually graduates now, four graduates who have earned their Pi Alpha Award, and this is the National PA Honor Society. Uh, the society considers their GPA, volunteer work done as a PA student, and their leadership. And these students are, graduates are, Shannon Carroll, Pamela Jackson. I'll say Pamela's name again, Pamela Jackson. No, please stand, keep standing, sorry. Catherine LaFleur, and Christopher Marks. Thank you. We have our Excellence in Service Awards. This is volunteer work and service done during the PA program. Uh, Peter Zhang. <laughs> Pamela Jackson. And Shannon Carroll. Thank you. We have our Excellence in Advocacy for the PA profession. This award goes to Sarah Bailey. And our last award is the Excellence in Leadership Award. And this award went to Catherine LaFleur. <laughs> of note, our profession was started with the first PAs being Vietnam War veterans who had been Navy corpsmen. Veterans continue to be an important part of our profession. And we are proud to have two veterans in our graduating class of 2018, each having served tours in Afghanistan. Will these two graduates please stand and be recognized for your service? Mr. Felipe Flores. <laughs> and Ms. Erin McCann, please stay standing. Thank you for your service to our country. Please stay standing.
you can see what a special group of graduates this, uh, these people are. So thank you. We now hope that you enjoy your graduation ceremony, which is the culmination of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thetford, for those inspiring words. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, read to our address Dr. Patillo. President Patillo, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty, I would like to introduce Dr. Rohit Bala, Vice President of Quality and Chief Officer of Stanford Hospital to give the keynote address. Just a few words about Dr. Bala's accomplishments. Dr. Bala serves on the Board of Trustees for the Connecticut Hospital Association, the Quality Council of the State of Connecticut Innovation Program, and on programs for advisory committees of the Greater New York Hospital Association, United Hospital Fund, and America's Essential Hospitals. He is a member of the Sacred Heart PA Advisory Committee and has received the Sacred Heart University's Community Partner Award. Dr. Bala is an Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine at Columbia University's Vigalos College of Physicians and Surgeons and Adjunct Clinical Professor of Medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. He has lectured and published several papers in the areas of quality improvement and health policy and serves as a member of the editorial board of the American Journal of Medical Quality. Dr. Bala received his undergraduate and medical degree from Boston University School of Medicine's six-year BAMD program and his master's of public health degree from the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University. He completed an internal medicine residency training at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center and public health general preventative medicine residency training at New York City's Department of Health. And he's board certified in both specialties. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Bala. Thank you, Reynolds, for that uh, very generous and extremely kind introduction. Um, I wanted to start by uh, giving my thanks um, to Sacred Heart University. Um, this is a truly joyous and precedent-setting occasion, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak here uh, today to you. Uh, so thank you to President Patillo, Provost Paliwal, to the College of Health Professions, to Dean Walker, Dr. Thetford, and uh, distinguished faculty. And I wanted to start by just saying congratulations to this inaugural class of the Sacred Heart University uh, Master of Physician Assistant Studies in 2018. I've had the privilege of watching this program develop from um, its inception. Um, I've served on the advisory committee, as uh, Reynolds had mentioned, and um, I've seen Dr. Walker, Dr. Thetford, Dr. Yoon, and the faculty in action. And um, from my kind of external vantage point, I've had the opportunity to really bear witness to not only the program itself, but really the thinking that went into it and the degree of innovation. Um, and I can tell you that this program has really been developed with a great deal of foresight, a uh, tremendous amount of intelligence, and what I don't often see, which is a tremendous amount of caring as to the details of how this program was constructed. And so I also want to say congratulations to you, but also to your family and friends, because as those of us who know who are in healthcare, the road is very long, it's not always easy, and there are many sacrifices along the way, particularly for our loved ones. So um, kudos to you as well. So before speaking, I just want to say, when you start, when you speak publicly, you have to start with your disclosures. So uh, one key disclosure for me is that I am married to a physician assistant. Um, so what that means is you are staring at a doctor who takes orders from a PA every day and does not complain. <laughs> So let me just start with um, how I, as a physician, uh, came to appreciate the role of the PA. And um, I think like many lessons in life, um, we'd like to think that they're all learned in books, but of course, uh, most of them are really learned through experience. And um, uh, as a resident, I remember um, during my training uh, being on call, um, and uh, we had admitted a patient with gastrointestinal bleeding uh, and uh, taking care of the patient. Uh, had profuse bleeding, uh, ended up having uh, peptic ulcer disease. We had GIC the patient, uh, heater probe the bleeder, doing fine. Um, the next morning, patient's very stable. Uh, everything looks good. I had just completed towards that evening 36 hours straight of work. 
this was back before silly things like labor laws and basic human decency uh, were in existence. Um, and so um, ready to go home and uh, um, uh, patient looked very well and uh, the PA student who was on my service said to me, well you said on rounds uh, yesterday morning that when we have a GI bleeder we, um, we check blood counts every six hours regardless of how they look. And uh, so I said, yeah, that's true, but I just looked at the patient, they look like a rose, um, and I think they're ready to go home. Um, and you know, the PA student said, well, we're supposed to check the blood counts every six hours. So I said, okay, it's fine, I'm gonna go home. Um, and uh, left, uh, come back the next day, where's the patient in the ICU? Um, turns out that night, uh, blood count was checked, blood count had dropped six points. Um, and uh, GI came back, saw the patient, couldn't stop the bleeding, called surgery, went to the operating room, uh, and uh, um, did fine after that from the ICU. Then I found myself in the ICU waiting room speaking to the family, and the family said to me, we're so grateful that you saved our loved one not once but twice, once when they first came in and then the next time with your vigilance around um, keeping your eye on them. And so that was a very powerful lesson for me, um, obviously as somebody who's in quality improvement of following medical protocols, but it really also uh, underscored the importance of the role of the PA. And uh, I kind of sat back in my chair at a, at a young, young stage of my career and really learned the value of uh, healthcare being a team sport and the importance of every discipline um, on the team. So, who are you? As Dr. Thetford mentioned, you are an extraordinarily accomplished group. You represent a diversity of experience. You've come from seven different states, many career paths and lives before uh, this program. You're an elite group by any measure, from over 800 applicants to have 26 of you graduating by my math, that's tremendous. Um, and you've already engaged in a, in a great deal of community service, over 500 hours, both here in the United States and internationally as well. Uh, you're engaged already in extramural pursuits. You've done presentations, publications, you've served on regional groups and national advisory groups. Uh, and you've completed a very rigorous training process imbued with your program's values of excellence, diversity, and compassion. And so it's really only fitting with that richness of experience, the rigorous training and service, that you are well prepared to engage in an extraordinary diversity of practice. And so as you head out into the U.S. healthcare system, you are heading out into a very dynamic and changing healthcare landscape. Based on gross domestic product, if you took healthcare spending in the United States, it would be the fifth largest country in the world, larger than the United Kingdom, healthcare spending in the U.S. alone. And there are powerful forces that are impacting healthcare here in the U.S. There are legislative forces with the enactment and the ongoing battles over the Affordable Care Act. There are political for forces following midterm elections with new leaders both at the federal and state level looking to impact and improve healthcare. There are technologic forces with the explosive growth of the connected world and financial forces with the pressures on healthcare costs. So not surprisingly, the system is changing amidst all of that. Hospitals are consolidating. Hospitals are acquiring other hospitals. They're acquiring physician practices. And this is today's horizontal integration. It's today's news. Tomorrow's news is the vertical integration that we're starting to see. We have retail stores buying insurance companies, insurance companies buying pharmaceutical entities, new telemedicine providers in the market, healthcare apps, wearable technologies, and consumers increasingly on the hook for their own healthcare, making personal critical decisions based on dollars and cents. And that means that care is changing. Care, healthcare is no longer the product of an individual physician, it's the collective action of a team. It's no longer care delivered in a hospital or office, but it's in a setting of the patient's choosing often. And it's not necessarily in person, it might be virtual. And it may not always involve payment for more care, but sometimes payment for better care. So amidst this profound change in 2018, we find all of you graduating today. And as a PA, I think you will bridge a key gap in this fast-changing healthcare system. I think you are extremely well equipped to confront this change head-on based on your training in this program. And I think you're poised to benefit from this change. 
you will bridge the gap between what traditional care systems and physicians can no longer do, and importantly, what patients and families need. You will deliver in part what the health system needs. And this is going to translate into more patient-centered care, enhanced outcomes, more efficient resource use. And importantly, you will help define what the health care of the future looks like. So today is an inflection point in your life. Um, as you look out at tomorrow, I'm reminded of what um, Sir William Osler said, who's considered to be the father of modern medicine. He said, the best preparation for tomorrow is to do today's work superbly well. And so now today, you're going to be saying, I'm a PA. And so what are those roles of the PA? They span the spectrum of the human condition. And I think it bears a collective reminder for our families, for our friends, and our public, what are the things that a PA does? And I think in the potential span of the PA role, I'm also reminded of what Hippocrates says, which is wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. And so in those roles of a PA, a PA might enable a delivery, one that starts a healthy childhood. A PA might provide an immunization, one that prevents a life lost to measles. A PA might prescribe a medication, one that avoids an asthma hospitalization. A PA might administer a reversal agent, one that saves a life lost to overdose. They might harvest a blood vessel during surgery, one that saves a patient in cardiogenic shock, or they might discuss palliative options, one that allows a family to choose quality versus quantity of life. Or perhaps they might write a medical justification so that a family who's homeless can have a shelter. The work that you do and will do is all the more vital in the social context of the times we live. They transcend rigid ideologies. The work transcends the antagonistic speech we hear every day and the rancorous partnership partisanship. It's deeply personal. It can't be posted for all to see. It takes time. It can't be summarized in 140 characters or less. It's complicated. It can't be characterized with a thumbs up or a smiley face. Taken together, these deeds remind us that you will deliver the fundamental aspects of health care. Indeed, they are the stuff of what ails and enables humanity. So for the first class of PAs, you bear a special responsibility. I'm reminded of what Albert Einstein said when he said, the person who follows the crowd will usually go no further than the crowd. The person who walks alone is likely to find himself in places no one has ever seen before. So as the inaugural class, you are pioneers, and it's quite fitting that the Sacred Heart University mascot is the pioneer. And so as pioneers, you'll head out into the healthcare system empowered with the desire for good, empowered with the gift of new knowledge, empowered with new expertise, with the diversity of possibility, with the ability to deliver the health care of the future, and importantly, to define the health care of the future. Indeed, to live a life well lived. And so as you embark on that journey, I'm reminded in conclusion of the words of Dr. Albert Schweitzer. He was an extraordinarily accomplished physician and humanist, a, a theologian, musician, uh, received the Nobel Prize in 1952 decided to devote his professional life to health care in Africa. And he said, apropos of today, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. So thank you for the opportunity to address you on this auspicious occasion and to the Sacred Heart University Master of PA Studies Class of 2018, my and our warmest congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Bala. Those are really remarkable, exceptional, and inspirational remarks. Now we will hear a musical selection called Blessings, written by Laura Story and sung by Timothy McIntosh. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity, and we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering 
And all the while you hear its spoken need Yet love us way too much to give us lesser things Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. And we doubt your goodness, and we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough And all the while you hear each desperate plea Yet long that we'd have faith to believe Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears? And what if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know the pain reminds his heart that this is not, this is not our home. It's not our home. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if my greatest disappointment or the aching of this life is the revealing of the greater thirst this world can satisfy. And what if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise? Between a Dr. Vala's speech and that song, thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Timothy. Really appreciate that. We will now begin the distribution of degrees to Sacred Heart University's Master Physician Assistant students. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is a professional photographer taking pictures of each graduate. In the interest of decorum, as a courtesy for those around you, please remain seated while the graduates are awarded their degrees. Thanks for each of you to your cooperation. I now call upon Dr. Patricia Walker, Dean of the College of Health Professions, who will present the candidates for degrees from the college. Dr. Walker.
Will the candidates for the degree Master of Physician Assistant Studies please rise? Dr. Patillo, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Health Professions, I present the candidates for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies and respectfully recommend that such degree be conferred upon them. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Connecticut and by the trustees of Sacred Heart University, I confer upon the candidates from the College of Health Professions the degree of Master Physician Assistant Studies. Congratulations, graduates. Kamruz Ahmed. Sarah Bailey. Vanessa Barber. Meredith Braga. Shannon Carroll. Lauren Castaldi. Jane Choi. Jonathan Dale. Fiona Donegan. Felipe Flores. Christine Harper. Dena Faye Harold. Chase Hickson. Pamela Jackson. Molly Jeffrey. Catherine Lafleur. Lubna Latif. Maya Lewis. Jessica Labreco Fernandez. Christopher Marks. Aaron McCann. Nathaniel Murray. Avery Petrucci. <laughs> Sean Rothenberger. Nicole Titarelli. Peter Zhang. Thank you, Dr. Thetford, for reading the names. This now concludes the awarding of the degrees. Graduates, can you please stand? 
Congratulations to all of our students on your accomplishments. You and your family and faculty members deserve a hearty round of applause. Congratulations. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Christopher Marks, Sacred Heart University's uh, PA class, class president, who will give the student congratulations. Chris has been a dynamic force as a student advocate for our program, and we are very proud of his accomplishments. Please welcome Mr. Marks. Good morning, everyone. When I was asked to do this speech, I actually had to think twice about whether or not I wanted to do it. For starters, there's the obvious component of angst with public speaking. Then there's the fact that this is such a big accomplishment for my classmates and I. <laughs> but mostly, I just didn't want to have to picture my parents, my in-laws, the faculty, in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I have an encouraging wife who made it quite easy on me when she said, you're being a baby, do the darn speech. So here I am today. <laughs> Standing in front of you all today, I would like to start by saying what an honor it has been going through such a challenging process with those 25 students by my side. They themselves will tell you they didn't make it easy on me. I had hair when we started PA school, <laughs> believe it or not. But those 25 individuals are some of the most compassionate, hardworking people I've ever had the pleasure to call my peers. For many of us, the paths to PA school were very different. Some students got their call of acceptance shortly after finishing their undergraduate studies. Others worked for a few years before finally getting the call. The challenges of getting into PA school are well documented, and each of us here today are here because we beat those odds and we got that call. In our didactic year, we averaged about three exams a week, multiple assignments, and the class day was about eight hours, including a Saturday class, which I think my classmates would agree we didn't mind so much because Dr. Brown rules. But during all of this academic chaos, we had to gel with near strangers if we had any shot at making it 27 months. Were there difficult times? Of course there were. But to enter into such an endeavor as PA school without expecting challenges would just be naive. I remember hearing a quote a while back from Teddy Roosevelt that states, complaining without a solution is called whining. As it just so happens, we found our solution. It was a combination of energy drinks, Taco Bell, and our very own mystery baker. <laughs> that fueled our studying. And while we each had our own study routines, there were a few constants you could count on the night before an exam. The first being that Lubna would fall asleep studying at Tandit. <laughs> the second being that Chase would be comfortably in bed by nine. And the third was that anyone that needed help with a subject would get help from 25 other students without any hesitation. That is what stood out to me the most about this group. In the most trying of times, inside of school and out, there was always at least one person who had your back. I would also be remiss if I did not mention the support system that helped us get, through this, get to this point. Be it our family, our spouses, our friends, our pets, Many of you put up with us and felt the weight of our difficulties, and you should all give yourselves credit, because the accomplishment we're celebrating today simply wouldn't have been possible without all of you. We love you. That being said, we did do all the heavy lifting, so all the drinks are on your tabs later tonight. <laughs> and now, as time winds down until the end of our ceremony, I think it's only natural that each of my classmates and I reflect on the different paths that we all took to get to this moment. Reminiscing about the challenges and the moments we shared is only natural. Whether it was the admission cycle, the med sci take-home quizzes, the correct spelling of Peter, <laughs> the Super Bowl parties, Friendsgiving, French Krillers, the beer garden, studying in Starbucks, Tegan's, Tiernan's, T-bombs, fishing, kickball by the beach, underground fitness, the Super Bowl Fantasy League, winning the Graduate Olympics, parking on Adam Street, Pamela's baking, all of those things made the last 27 months so memorable. And for that reason, I want to end my speech with a quote from Marv Levy, the Buffalo Bills winningest head coach, <laughs> surprise, surprise, who brought them to an unprecedented four Super Bowls in a row. On the night of the big game, 
when distractions were abundant and players' minds would revisit memories from the regular season, Marv would remind them, where would you rather be than right here, right now? So class of 2018, as we prepare to celebrate our biggest academic accomplishment, I ask you, where would you rather be than right here, right now? Thank you. I would like to ask the class of 18 to remain standing, and if you would now please join me in moving your tassels from the right side of your hat to the left, officially signifying our transition from candidates to graduates. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Christopher. That was well spoken, and thank you for sharing those memories with us. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Henry Yoon, PA Program Medical Director and Program Director for Columbia University Family Medicine Residency Program at Stanford Hospital, who, administer, who will administer the Physician Assistant Oath. Dr. Yoon. Would the graduating class of 2018 please stand and repeat after me in reciting the Physician Assistant Professional Oath. I pledge to perform the following duties with honesty and dedication. I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. I will recognize and promote the value of diversity. I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills, keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care to patients. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care to patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to an improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with the physician. I will share and expand knowledge within the profession. These duties are pledged with sincerity and upon my honor. Thank you and congratulations. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Yoon, for those words. I now call upon Dr. Teresa Thetford for closing remarks. Dr. Thetford. So here we are. It's a little bit surreal, isn't it? We've used that term a few times in the last few weeks. It really is. We couldn't be more proud of you. Um, I know there's lots of parents in here, and I sort of feel like a parent who's letting go that their child is leaving. <laughs> um, we're so proud to have been a part of your education. Thank you for your trust in us. We appreciate that. 
I ask each graduate at this time to remember how hard you've worked, as Chris Marks just pointed out, how hard you've worked to get to this point. You've put 110% into this achievement. At times, during this high stress, low sleep environment, relationships have been challenged and challenging. Some of you have developed lifelong friendships, but some of you and many of us may never see each other again after this day. But I ask one thing of all of you, and that is to remember that this was a time of growth and continues to be a time of growth, to both cherish, cherish this growth as well as to use this day as a time of forgiveness and moving forward. There are so many things I'd like to say to you. Words of advice, guidance, to provide clarity for the future. There's just almost too much to say. So instead, I've tried to put just a few words of guidance into a few concise statements. So here's my short list of advice to you as you leave the safety net of your educational environment and embark on caring for your patients on your own and within the team. First and foremost, know what you don't know and ask for help when you need it. You'll be a better clinician when you're aware that you can't know everything. In medicine, life, learning is lifelong. Two, acknowledge good work and good people. Just saying, you did a great job, can go a long way to boost self-esteem and morale. Your team will be happier and more efficient. Three, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. This is a quote from cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead. You can make a difference in the lives of others. Don't doubt yourself. No task or act is too small to make a difference in someone's life. Four, although it sounds a little bit corny, keep the care in health care. Although scientific facts are the crux of medicine and how we provide medical care, we are health care providers, we're not health scientists. So be truly empathetic. Show interest in your patients. Care about the patient, their families, and the outcome of their illness. Five, be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is who you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. This is a quote from the late, great John Wooden, UCLA basketball coach and a life mentor for his players. Six, be patient with those who are learning. Always remember what it was like to be a student. Those times should, those memories should not go away. Others have been patient and have taught you, and now it will soon be your turn to pay it forward and teach others. Be the teacher that allows others to be comfortable in asking you questions. Be patient, be kind. Have the highest personal integrity. Do what's right, even when no one's looking. Remember that you will always know the truth, and that will last forever. And lastly, and this is a quote from a Dr. Tapish Kansel, who is a psychiatrist that was a preceptor for our students at another school I was at in California. But his quote is so beautiful, I had to use it here. And I quote, there is no greater love than being able to fall, I'm sorry, let me start again. There is no greater love than being able to help fellow human beings in distress. We are a privileged lot to be granted an opportunity to do it. We are not doing anyone a favor by treating our patients. Patients are doing us a favor by trusting us in their hour of greatest need, end quote. So in closing, my final words are this. You probably thought you'd never hear final words from me, right? <laughs> I always ask for an extra five minutes after every lecture, it seems like. But here they are. <laughs> never accept being mediocre. Always strive to be the best you can be. Know your strengths, admit your faults, and put your patient's well-being before your own. I want to thank you for choosing to make this journey with the Sacred Heart University PA program. We're extremely proud of you. Now go out there, make a difference in your patients' lives. You're highly educated, compassionate, caring PAs. Make us proud, but most importantly, make yourself proud. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Dr. Thetford, for those ins inspirational words. I will now call upon Father Anthony Ciora, who will offer the benediction. Father Ciora. And to our graduates, as I look at you, you fill me with such hope, hope for the world and hope for each and every one of us and that you carry forth the mission of this university. And I share with you uh, a prayer uh, that's written for those in the health professions. And it is you, who I think, who most explicitly carry the mission of this university and the fact that you are experts in compassion. It's not, not just knowledge, but it's the compassion that you bring to others, that you've learned that art while you're here. So I leave you with this prayer that is written for you and for the profession, in that, to, to, to profession to which you are called. Your mind and your hearts knows the world of illness, the fright that invades a person arriving in out of the world, distraught and grieved by illness. How it can strip a life of its joy, dim the light of the heart, put shock in the eyes. You see worlds breaking at the onset of illness, families at bedsides distraught that their mother's name has come up in the secret lottery of misfortune that had always chosen someone else. You watch their helpless love that would exchange places with her. The veil of skin opened, the search through the body's night to remove tissue war-torn with cancer. Young wives that should be out in the sun enjoying life with wild hearts come in here lame by accident, and the lucky ones who leave already old and in captive posture. The elderly who should be prepared but are frightened and unsure. You understand no one can learn beforehand an eloquent or easy way to die. In this fragile frontier place, your kindness and compassion becomes a light that consoles the brokenhearted, awakens within desperate storms that oasis of serenity that calls the spirit to rise from beneath the weight of pain to create a new space in the person's mind where they gain distance from their suffering and begin to see the invitation to integrate and transform it. May you graduates embrace the beauty in what you do and how you stand like secret angels between the bleak despair of illness and the unquenchable light of spirit that can turn the darkest destiny towards light. May you never doubt the gifts that you bring. Rather, learn from these frontiers wisdom for your own heart. May you come to inherit the blessings of your kindness and never be without care, love, and compassion when winter enters your own life. Amen. Thank you kindly, Father Ciora. Will the audience please rise and remain standing in front of your chairs until the platform party and faculty process from the stage? We would like to continue our tradition and invite anyone in attendance to the art gallery atrium for refreshments. And this now concludes Sacred Heart University's inaugural class 2018 graduation ceremony. Thank you. Thank you.